Okay, we're ready to start the dovetails, and, and here's what we've got to cut. And you see the little notch we, we've left out of this one tail. And uh, this is a fairly narrow board, so I just did two tails. And you can see how this little notch is level with the bottom of the groove, and you'll see that as we go. So this is the back board, and I'm cutting the tails on it. Uh, you could make this the pin board if you want to. Um, I'm, I'm going to use, I'd like the extra support on the end board. So by making them the pin boards makes it a little bit stronger in that direction. So to start off, we need to uh, make the baseline. And this is, this gauge is set uh, just where it's just a shade wider than the board is thick and and we'll scribe both elements uh, this board and the pin board with the same gauge and at the same setting and just just run it around make a good line that you can see And this, this is a little bit tougher than normal dovetailing because this board is, this backboard is a little over six feet long. But uh, I kind of have to work a little bit of an angle on some of this, but we'll, we'll make it work. So we've got our baseline here, and I'll darken that a little so you can see it. I can keep my pencil in there. And what I generally do on one like this is just use whatever chisel I want my pins to be. And this, this one is a half inch chisel. And just right here at the bottom edge, with the chisel pretty close to the edge, just push in. What you're doing, and this might be a little hard to see, but I'll make a pencil mark. But there's where my uh, chisel mark stops. Okay, on the top edge, normally you would do exactly the same thing, but over time we may have to flatten the bench top, and this board is the same height as the bench is thick. So it may eventually have to have some planed off the top. So I'm going to move my chisel down just a little bit to leave a little bit of extra on that top, what will be the half pin on top, and just uh, same thing again. I didn't push in enough. Make you a little chisel mark, and right there's the edge of it. Okay, we're just doing two tails, so all we have to do is split that area in two. So we've got about uh, right around two and a quarter there. So move my. I know I'm where you can't see me, so. Go about an inch and an eighth. And just make a mark about where the center is. This is not critical. If this is a, a shade to one side or the other, it's not the end of the world. So just center your chisel on that mark. Set it in your baseline. And just like what we did before. And you can see now we have, these are actually going to be the pin, where the pins come through. This will make sense as we go along. My uh, bevel is set to, I have no idea what. It's, uh, I've copied what I've already cut on the other end, so it's already set, but I don't know what uh, angle exactly that is. And what I'm doing here is going at the edge of where I set in with the chisel is where I line my little bevel up. And the only thing about the angle here, I try to leave enough room where I can get two saw curves started right here. Then on this outside one, the edge of my, where I staked in with the chisel, make a mark, same thing over here. Okay, this, these are our two tails. They're gonna stay, mark your waist. That's what has to be cut out. So like I said, this being a six foot long board, 
kind of complicates your life a little bit when it comes to dovetailing. We're going to bring these marks across here. Just in case you can't see, right there's where we're at. Have it laid out. Okay, now I've put it in the vise here and we're, we're ready to saw. Uh, main thing here is staying on the angled lines is not real critical, but you want to be square across in this direction because we're going to lay out the pins off of off of these tails that we're, we're cutting out now. This part is not real critical other than that direction. with a coping saw and we'll remove the waste right here in this center one while we've got it clamped up in this direction. To turn the saw a little bit. Okay. Okay, now we need to move it and come back and cut these two, our two edges, and we'll be ready to clean it up. Okay, okay the waste uh, on the sides here, I, I generally cut uh, a shade off the line, and then when I chisel my base lines, uh, I clean it up then. Some, some folks saw right on that line, um, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, it's fine with me. So. majority of the waste sawn away now we can uh, finish up and what I do is just use the set the chisel right in the baseline we made with the uh, cutting gauge earlier the little knife knife line and this one is almost right on it anyway I co coped it all the way to the bottom just about but if you'll notice too, my chisel is, is exactly the right width. I, this is the same half inch chisel I used to lay these out with. So, so just go about halfway and just and undercut it just a little bit. We don't want any interference from the end grain there out towards the center. So. And then on these sides, I do the same thing. This is uh, what I was talking about a minute ago, some people, when they saw the side waste off go all the way to this line, I tend to get a little better results going the first route. And like I said, halfway, halfway from either side.
Okay. And just same thing on this side, just right down to that bass line. Undercut in the center. One last little thing while we're on this side. Um, here's our groove coming through. And we want to remove this little, little noggin that's left right here on this uh, side of this tail. While, while we're here, we'll go ahead and knock that off. And what I'm doing right here is just severing it across the grain. And you can take your chisel and just bring it down uh, pretty much level with the bottom of this groove, flush with it. And there we go. Okay, with our tails cut, we're ready to lay out where the pins will go on the end board. And that's pretty simple. What I've done is I've, with this long piece, this like I said, it uh, makes this complicated too. I've lined it up with the edge of my bench. And I've kind of got it just uh, lightly held in place with a hole fast. Be sure your grooves are aligned or on the same side of the board. Same side of both boards, rather. And there's several ways of uh, scribing this. Use a knife or a pencil. In this case, I'm just going to use a pencil. Just be sure to get real nice and tight up against that tail. Be sure your pencil's sharp. And there we go. So now, this is our waist has to come out and we need to remember when we lay out over here we're going to leave a little fillet to fill that notch in the tail and I haven't scribed my baseline on this on the pin board and you only have to do it on the two face sides you don't have to do it on the edges just same as we did on the other bring that on across And at this point, you can use your square and bring these lines down. Whoa, get back here. As a guide. Okay, on this one, you know what I do is uh, we know that that fillet is straight with the groove. So we're going to bring this around. over here. And then I tend to leave this uh, just a little bit long. Set this over on with my baseline right at the bottom of that one. Like I said, the, the safe thing is to leave this baseline just a shade long. It's real easy to uh, trim a little more off right there. And I'm going to erase my line right here coming down. 
So I'll remember not to go past this line. It's, it's very easy to do. So I need to bring that one on down. So there's what we have. And we'll saw here, 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 down to right here, and that'll leave this little block as our fillet. So now we're ready to saw. Okay, the trick, or got good guideline here, I don't know if it's a trick, is to, you, you want to cut in the waist, and our pencil lines where we scribed off the tails are actually outside of the tails uh, where they're, they landed on here. So we need to be sure and stay on the inside, the waist side of those pencil marks. And when we get done, we want them to still be there. So you may want to kind of take your time here starting and then just bring it on down to your baseline. Okay, right here on our groove, we want to saw just where the saw is just right at the edge of that. And go all the way to the baseline. Okay, this one on this far side is where our fillet is that we're leaving to fill that groove. So we don't want to go, we want to be sure to stop at our line, not forget. We can just take our coping saw and get that waist out of the way. And we need to remember the angles of the pins when we're sawing the waist out. We don't want to cut into them. Okay, right here we move up. of our little fillet. Okay, and there we go. The waste is removed. Now we're ready to uh, lay it back down and chisel our base lines and we'll be ready to uh, test fit it and see if it'll fit. Okay, just like on the tailboard, we're going to clean up our base lines here. And just, just like before, we want to just register our chisel in that little knife line we made. And we need to remember our angle there and go about halfway across. Just the same thing we did earlier. Right here we have a baseline up here on top, and this piece is a little bit tends to want to break sometimes because the groove is behind it. So we're gonna just go real easy. Okay, now we're ready to this over. Come back from the other side. Be 
Be sure your corners are good and clean. Easy to leave little pieces in there. Okay, this side, I'm below my baseline. I run past my line a little bit with the coping saw, but it's on the inside, so not a big deal. Right there, there. Be very careful with that little fillet piece there. Corners are clean. Okay, this part, I'm, my chisel won't quite fit, so I'm going to switch to just a one size more narrow and clean this last little bit out. Okay. Looks pretty good, pretty good. So now we can try it. Don't drop it. Okay, you see it's pretty good. I need to trim just a little, little bit more off my fillet so it'll go the rest of the way together. But we're looking pretty good there. So let's pull it back apart and trim that. We'll be ready to move to the bottom board. This is Joshua Farnsworth. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, workshop tours of amazing traditional woodworkers, and tool buying guides. You can ask questions and share your projects with thousands of woodworkers on my free traditional woodworking forum. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts, and also check out my 10 steps for getting started in traditional woodworking. Enjoy!